Welcome to the session. The time for deep level Drupal is now. Uh, really excited to be here. My name is John. Uh, I'm the CEO of Technical Architect, Drupal Advocate. Uh, still develop code. Uh, work for Digital Polygon. Um, you can find me on uh, Drupal Slack, John Dale. Um, and when I'm not working, uh, I like to be out away from a computer outside, rock climbing, snowboarding, hiking, uh, fishing. Um, so. Uh, yeah, hoping to get to do some of that while I'm here in Florida. Um, what we're going to talk about today, uh, first thing is what is decoupled? Um, just kind of setting some definitions because decoupled, high list, kind of buzzwords being thrown all over the place. Uh, what are the benefits of decoupled Drupal provides to content and marketing teams? So again, really focusing more uh, away from the actual coding of how these things play together. Uh, and talking about the benefits that decoupled can provide for your teams. Um, talk about a little bit about why now is the right time, uh, and then some key considerations if you're thinking about uh, moving to decoupled. So if we start, uh, the first thing that we want to talk about is uh, what is decoupled Drupal? And decoupled Drupal is going to be, uh, for the purposes of this presentation, Drupal as a CMS, and then a front-end framework uh, managing your presentation layer. So Drupal will be responsible for your content management, uh, maybe some data integrations, uh, and then exposing that content to a front-end framework or multiple frameworks that uh, actually render that out to your end users. Uh, what is a headless CMS? Uh, so Drupal being used as a content management system, uh, leveraging the content offering experience. I kind of just said this, but here's a diagram that kind of shows traditional couple of monolithic versus a default website. Um, I'm sure stuff you've probably seen before. And uh, yeah, again, data separation of data and uh, content from actual presentation layer. Uh, fun and frameworks, um, there's a lot of them out there. Um, here's some of the bigger ones that uh, have some level of integration into Drupal. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we'll really be talking uh, more about Next.js uh, contextually. Uh, but I know Gatsby uh, also has some uh, great starter kits and uh, work in the space. All right. So let's talk about the benefits of decoupled. Um, you get the best of both worlds when you decouple your website. So unlike the traditional monolithic CMS, um, you are able to leverage uh, more of the new front-end frameworks and technologies. Um, that we still get all the benefits of robust content management uh, from Drupal. Um, so instead of you having to go build a custom view app uh, where you have to go to development teams to manage your content and make updates, um, you uh, are able to still have your content and marketing teams control that, run workflows, run business process management um, across those uh, those flows, pulling translations. Right, all of the all of the power of Drupal still remains. Um, but you can leverage uh, better personalization, uh, better SEO, better content rendering, and get a more app-like experience from the front end um, by leveraging the front end frameworks. Um, I think a common misconception is when I go decoupled, I can't use all of Drupal's technology and tools and their content, uh, their, their concept building anymore. And that just isn't the case. Um, so, uh, right now we're doing uh, a lot of work uh, with the sites that we're working on. We still leverage paragraphs for most of uh, the decoup decoupled content uh, that we build. Um, and we're investigating right now opportunities to use Layout Builder and Gutenberg. Um, so, when you do have decoupled, uh, traditionally it's a separation of content and display. So, you're thinking about your content strategy and building pieces of a page that are reusable and then letting your front-end frameworks pull that content in however and display it however they want to manage that. Um, in some cases, if you're looking, depending on the goals of your website, if you're looking to uh, kind of leverage uh, the benefits of user experience and SEO um, for, like, let's say a marketing site, a smaller company, you can still build a decouple application, um, but leave the control of the layout within Drupal. So you can you can build your front end app to respect uh, like regions and content layouts so that they have more control over that and expose that to your content authors as well. Um, it just it really depends on what type of uh, 
I guess, content architecture looking to build, um, but th these things are possible. Um, another benefit is the developer experience and flexibility. Um, I was, uh, talked a little bit earlier about this, uh, but um, being able to separate how we handle code deployments from a developer perspective enables us to move faster. Um, in our case, uh, well, right now we're running sprints on the actual Drupal implementation in the back end uh, for security updates, for config updates, for anything that's going to uh, really expose security issues or API issues to the application uh, because we have just more advanced testing and uh, a more thorough, not thorough, uh, more complex workflow and approval process in a lot of those applications. And then on the front end, uh, we've got multi-dev environments that we spin out for every single pull request and every single ticket uh, that gets reviewed, approved, and then it gets auto-deployed to production as soon as it's uh, been approved by the team. So we're able to separate concerns from back-end application development and front-end theming changes. Uh, this also allows marketing teams to say spin up uh, campaign pages and microsites leveraging content from your CMS. So if I want to build uh, a new campaign microsite for something that I'm launching next week, I don't need to get into a month-long uh, kind of roadmap cycle with my back-end team because they've, they've got their sprints planned out already. Uh, we can build that, consume the content from the structures right in place, but build a, a more engaging kind of customized application there um, without uh, having to hard code all of it. Uh, and the system really, really helps speed up uh, time to market for, for these types of uh, scenarios for, uh, for, for your marketing team. Um, multi channel distribution uh, is a big benefit and really a big use case for uh, decoupled. Uh, create once, consume everywhere. Uh, similar to the code principle of create once, publish everywhere. And uh, just a couple of cases I'll call out here. Um, for the front end use case, again, building robust microsites that consume content from a centralized backend. Your marketing team knows how to work with it. Um, but I want to spin up different microsites for different campaigns, or maybe I have uh, different brands uh, wanting to see leverage the same content but expose it differently. Uh, for the back end use case, um, really centralizing your data. And I can talk more about this later. Um, on why data centralization, I think, is be going to become more important over the next few years. Um, but uh, centralizing that, that, that content management and allowing it to be leveraged by other applications is really important uh, for really larger, uh, probably larger organizations or people that have, um, so let's say you've got a website, you've got mobile apps, you want to provide the same content. Anywhere you're duplicating content, uh, and have you really consolidate, the couple could be uh, a good option for that. Um, a recent use case that we came across was uh, we've got some customers that have multiple uh, mobile applications. And right now on all of their mobile applications, all of the content and marketing content in those applications is hard-coded within their mobile apps. So being able to build a content repository to manage the content, build the data model, and then have them just consume that via APIs uh, is, uh, is is something that Decouple could be a good use case for. And Drupal having the workflows and the processes publish that out and then uh, it go live uh, is, is uh, something that, that we push them and uh, I think it's going to work out really well. Um, great. Another benefit, user experience in SEO. Um, the way I like to talk about this is uh, the more and more social media becomes mainstream, the more and more people get less patient and want a more interactive experience and want the content that they want when they want it. Uh, and they're expecting more out of your website than just uh, a website with content on it, right? Um, and traditional technologies like Drupal and even WordPress uh, are not innovating at the same rate that React and Angular and these front-end frameworks are. Uh, part of this is because native JavaScript just does better with user experience. Um, and uh, tying into this, now you've got the search engines also respecting user experience more in the search algorithms. So if your site uh, loads slow uh, or 
um, you know, I don't know how familiar you guys are with Core Web Vitals, right? But um, the way that your page loads, and uh, if there's any shifts to your content after that initial page load, uh, you're going to start getting dinged on SEO, right? So these things are, are, uh, are better handled in these front end frameworks. And as that becomes more and more of a priority for Google to decide that your users are going to have a good experience, um, it's something that we need to take into account uh, when we're building websites. And uh, the decoupled front ends really provide just a much better experience for that. Um, and uh, this leads to better site performance. Uh, after my, uh, we, we used Digital Polygon, our website, to kind of test decoupled uh, last year. And uh, really just was amazed with the, the difference in performance that, that we got from switching the WordPress to uh, to Next.js is the branding that we used. Um, we were getting 100% uh, scores on uh, our desktop site, uh, which I uh, just I thought was kind of impossible because we do have some some scripts running. Um, but uh, it was it was great to see it. Um, and I'll dive more to this in the second part of the presentation. But uh, the wins here, huge performance improvements, uh, improved user experience. It just loads much better. Uh, it's it's less jumpy than what we had in WordPress. Uh, faster time to market for new features. Like I said, I want something changed on the website. The team builds it. I approve it. It goes live the same day. Um, and then uh, I think the most fascinating part of here is, is this one here. We developed and launched the new website in under two months uh, with two developers working weekends. Uh, so uh, it, it wasn't, we didn't have a full team on it. And uh, a lot of this was thanks to a lot of work that Brian and his team did uh, at Pantheon, leveraging the Pantheon starter kits. Um, it just, we didn't have to build a middleware layer. We didn't have to, um, you know, work on figuring out how Next and Drupal were going to talk to each other. A lot of these pieces were put in place for us. Uh, and there's some information on the tech that we use down here. Um, just, you know, it wasn't a one page site that we built in two months. Uh, it was actually a, a plus CMS. We've got a blog and some landing pages and things like that. All right. Why now? Um, really, three reasons why I think Decoupled is gaining popularity and is going to continue to gain popularity over the next. Uh, say year and beyond. Uh, the first is the maturity of products and frameworks. Uh, Gatsby and Next.js um, are both evolving. Um, I tried Gatsby two years ago uh, for a website and really got stuck on the, the static site generation piece of it. Uh, it didn't have good server side rendering support uh, or any, I think, at that time. And most of the applications that we developed just just isn't the right application for that, right? So now with Gatsby and Next, having server-side rendering, having incremental site regeneration or static regeneration, um, and platforms like Pantheon and Acquia and Vercel and Network 5 uh, really pushing the, uh, the tooling around these uh, applications, it's becoming much, much faster uh, to get these things up. and. You know, I don't have to go to a customer who wants to think about decoupled, tell them it's going to be twice as much, and then have to walk away. Um, the second piece is the evolution of marketing and technology. Um, again, people's uh, expectations are changing. Uh, marketing is changing. Uh, God, uh, I won't dive into it too much here, but um, I think a big driver of this over the next five years, let's say, is going to be uh, the privacy regulations that are coming out and the need to centralize data. Um, and I, I see brands shifting towards that to a more uh, gated user experience uh, because they can't do what they want to do with marketing anymore when they can't just steal or use your data however they want, right? Um, so just keep an eye on that as, as uh, more of these privacy regulations push through. But again, marketing tech and user expectations are changing. and. Uh, these front end frameworks are better equipped to handle uh, the front end applications uh, side of things than, uh, than monolithic CMSs are. And lastly, the movement of innovation and talent. Um, yeah, it's, it's getting harder to find Drupal developers and WordPress developers. 
most of the front end uh, teams that we work with, or even even my team, my front end developers want to work on React. They want to work on Angular. They want to play with these new front end frameworks. And uh, I think uh, schools are, are, you know, transitioning their curriculums to a lot of these JavaScript based frameworks, and we're going to continue to see uh, movement of talent into these areas. So uh, another thing to consider while we're well, why now is right. Um, just taking a look at, at some of the landscape, um, I think this probably isn't 100% complete. Uh, I'm still working on it, but uh, platforms that have been uh, maturing, Pantheon, Vercel, Netlify, Aqua, uh, Platform SH. Um, I know Pantheon's front end sites just came out. Aqua just released a decouple offering. Um, you continue to see more and more uh, platforms throw these out. Frameworks like Next.js and Gatsby.js. Uh, starter kits. Pantheon has done a great job with their starter kits. Uh, Next Drupal also has a set uh, that we started using for uh, another POC that we're working with. It's called Drupal. Uh, their, their starter kit uses Drupal Client. Um, and they've got, um, right now, the biggest difference between Drupal State, which is Pantheon's and Drupal Client from the library's point of view, this client has post support. So uh, we can do post backs and write to Drupal from uh, your decoupled applications. Um, I don't know, Brian, is, uh, did that go into Drupal State yet? Uh, yeah. Post yeah. OK. But my dream uh, actually is that uh, Drupal can have its own version of the best of the world from those things. Yeah. But we'll see. Awesome. Um, and then we've got uh, other libraries like GraphQL and JSON API. That are exposing this information for Drupal and they're continuing to grow. Um, the decoupled menus initiatives wrapping up is a big milestone in, in that support. Uh, we're continuing to see more and more of that as, uh, as the community uh, innovates here. Um, so, like I mentioned on, on the first slide, complexity is decreasing, right? The maturity of the platforms, uh, complexity to set up a decoupled site went from double or triple the budget of a normal site to uh, it's getting to a convergence where it's almost on par now. Um, if you've got the right team, I'll put it in quotes. Uh, uh, you, your teams have to have the JavaScript experience to be able to build it, but um, you know, with, with the right team and the right uh, developers, uh, you can build a decoupled site at the same cost that you build monolithic sites because you don't have to engineer uh, all of the middleware that goes between the two applications. Um, evolution of marketing tech uh, kind of hammered on this a little bit. Um, again, user expectations are increasing. Uh, the technology for marketing is changing. Um, you're seeing uh, a movement from these third-party uh, applications, third-party tracking, uh, and uh, you being able to do whatever you want with people's data uh, to a place where um, you know, Sephora is getting sued for having a Facebook pixel on their website uh, because they're selling data to Facebook is, is how California uh, put that. Um, and in order for users to uh, continue doing what they're doing, uh, sorry, in order for businesses to continue doing what they're doing, they need more interactions from users. And that's going to require a higher level of experience than they did in the past because you can't just go buy that data anymore. Um, so I think that's going to be a big driver for, for why decouple is going to continue to drive uh, or gain traction uh, this year. Right, so what are some things you should consider uh, when uh, deciding if you should go coupled or uh, for a decoupled application? Uh, I think the first thing is your content strategy. Uh, are you going to create, are you currently creating duplicate content across channels? Um, are developers involved in their current content creation or publishing process? Uh, and does your marketing team need to get involved? Um, pretty straightforward here, uh, but uh, if either of these things are, happen are, are happening for you right now, uh, decouple of CMS or have the CMS could be a good uh, option for you. How your team strengths? Um, do you have experience or can you pull in team members with uh, the right experience to build decoupled? Um, you know, when uh, when we did the digital polygon site, uh, my team had never worked with uh, Next.js before, um, and we were still able to pick it up pretty easily. Um, we used Storybook a lot, so we had some React experience and 
uh, component-based design uh, methodology, but um, still something you want to take in and consider when you're, you know, selling this to a client or trying to pitch to couple to a to a new uh, new customer for yourselves. And then, uh, how frequently do you need to make upside, updates to your website? I mean, if you've got microsites or other content that need to be really flashy, but the content never changes. Uh, maybe you don't have to go to decouple and maybe you can just continue building it out the way that you're doing it in view or uh, whatever you need. Um, so, you know, it, it's good to ask these questions. I don't think decoupled is right for every solution. Um, and, uh, and I think that's important. Uh, lastly, your website needs, uh, obviously this gets a bit deeper into the architecture of uh, what you need for your website and uh, how it's going to be used. So um, flexibility, uh, how much flexibility do you need in your content creation? This goes back to content architecture being really important and um, that can impact how you build your, your applications. Uh, also impacts how your data is structured and you know let's say you've got this central data store that needs to be consumed by uh, websites and mobile apps and, and things like that uh, you need to think through the content strategy for more than just uh, your one web application when you're doing this um, so uh, you know make sure you plan that out well uh, because if you start putting you know, exposing Gutenberg in a WYSIWYG that's just rendered into your Next.js app, uh, that's probably not going to work well for mobile apps and other other uh, technologies that need to uh, leverage that data in a different way. Um, you know, scale, flexibility, um, performance, I think, is, is important, um, and security. Um, by decoupling, uh, we're able to really put a lot less exposure onto Drupal as a CMS, um, even possibly put it behind firewalls because uh, it never needs to be accessed by front end users. Um, and really you're just exposing your, your uh, data uh, front end presentation layer of that site. Uh, so you get a lot of security benefits by doing that as well. Um, not, you're not trying to read the whole slide out like that, but uh, key takeaways. Um, three takeaways from this presentation. Uh, innovation is driving change, and if you don't stay ahead, you're going to fall behind. Um, uh, and then, you know, uh, kind of beat this, uh, beat this point uh, over a couple slides, but search engines will continue to favor uh, more engaging user experiences. Uh, user expectations will change, uh, and they're going to continue to want more, faster, uh, more elegant, native, uh, like experiences uh, to, to mirror what they do on a regular basis um, and as mobile continues to gain popularity. Um, and then again, innovation of talent is moving towards front end frameworks. So it's going to continue to become harder to find uh, talent for monolithic CMSs uh, and, and full stack presentation layers because, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not as fun to work in, uh, in Twig as it is to work in, in JavaScript. So, so says says my whole front end teams. Um, yeah. So uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a back end up. But, uh, my my feeling is uh, decoupled Drupal provides a platform to stay ahead. Uh, I think it does an amazing job at the content management side of things. It has tooling that a lot of the newer JavaScript based CMSs don't have. Um, and it's got a, an awesome community behind it, and I, I really hope to see more adoption of Decoupled as we as we push this forward. And uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities to get involved with uh, contribution sprints around uh, the API layers and uh, the next integration kits. Uh, I highly recommend anyone to, uh, to take some time to do that. Um, so that is it. Uh, any questions? Who has on this? Yeah. So, are you doing a solution where you're implementing the ability for editors to preview what it's going to like in the couple of different Yeah. Uh, yeah, so decoupled preview is actually built into uh, both of these frameworks. So, let me just go ahead and pull up my site. Um, and within Drupal, there's uh, some decoupled preview functionality in Pantheon. This is using Pantheon setup, and they've done a lot of work to connect it. 
um, to connect the front and the back end. And if I click decouple preview, this will load up uh, that page in uh, a preview version of the Next.js app. So you can see it. Uh, and again, you can do this with the draft version of the page as well. Good. It has to be a revision. It still has to be a revision in Drupal, right? It has to be created in Drupal, yeah. Does it have to be stored, though? Like, it could be something that has a little bit saved, right? It's not like, technically, that is uh, true. So, a few things about that. So, yes, put the plugin on Drupal and Water, and if you were previewing three different scenarios, checklist. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward. But you can uh, preview revisions, and then it's also possible to preview out of your manual. So if you're editing the code, there's a different issue you want to learn as well. And what it does is something similar to what Drupal's traditional preview does, which it actually puts a representation of the node in the text. So, so the, the module exposes that data at the new API. And uh, the, the hope of that uh, module is that, so right now it just supports Next.js, but uh, the hope is that you can do a single preview module that can work as far as the value of frameworks. It's like structured in such a way that you have one of the preview software. Yeah, it works really well. Um, I think we've also uh, configured the preview functionality to uh, be able to select what environment we preview against. Um, so uh, we have uh, options on uh, some of the environments to, um, well, it goes both ways, to preview against not just our live site, but also, uh, let's say, a, a multi-dev. Um, and uh, on the front end side, in the Next.js app, when we're doing our uh, multi-dev creations, uh, we built in some configuration there to tell it what back end to point at. So we can either point it at dev, test, or prod um, based on what content we want to see and, and what level. Like if we need to build functionality into our back end sprints for content modeling, uh, we could actually stage our multi devs, point it at dev before it gets to production, and uh, make sure it works end to end as we have dependencies between front end and back end. Just to double check, that's the thing called the preview. I feel like there's a very important inflection point, but there's definitely a rise in the doctrine of recently because of the maturity of technologies. Is there a triple core of moving towards adopting more functionality to support decoupling or at least doing that? Like, I'm just kind of very slow. I'm probably not the best one to answer that. Uh, I know API, API First was uh, an initiative. Um, I didn't see it as uh, a, the last trees note as being one of the, the core initiatives because there was a lot of work done on it. But um, I don't know, Brian, if you have a better answer. Yeah. Um, the short answer, uh, this is you know, not a personal opinion, but uh, the API that's functions that should be sure. There was the Decouple with Menus initiative, and, and that was the intent to, to get kind of like a smaller slice of use case of how you know, that was to be able to better support like, front end developers in some way and build them many So, I would just say, you this right. The thing that I, again, personally think that people might be still invested in here is tools. Front end developers to interact with you. You know, one of the things that the Drupal is doing is that you really don't have a lot of tools for front end developers who find themselves working with Drupal and being not too much. So, I just, the question is kind of like, I feel like Drupal Dev is just a little bit behind the current trends. Not really, if there's a better shape than I can for doing what they're saying, but it sounds like it's still a little bit behind. Let's continue to do that. Yeah, I hope that won't change. I'm sorry. 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 I'm
Yeah. Anything else? You really have a one hundred square of legends. We do have a one hundred square of um, just uh, it's, So uh yeah, it depends on when I run it. <laughs> it does, yeah. We're all lazy loaded, but uh I don't know, you guys want to test it live? Let's turn off 